So good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you for taking the time today uh, to join us. My name is Kieran O'Kane. I am the Chief Commercial Officer of Biodesix. Uh, joining me today are uh, Dr. Springmeyer and Dr. Jett, our Co-Chief Medical Officers. Dr. Springmeyer is a fellow in the Royal College of, sorry, in the College of Chest Physicians uh, and worked at the University of Washington for a decade uh, as clinical professor of medicine until 2019. Uh, he's been working on the development and commercialization of the Notify XL2 test for more than five years now. Dr. Jett is a pulmonologist uh, and was on staff at the Mayo uh, Clinic in Rochester for 27 years before spending five years at National Jewish here in Denver. Dr. Jett is former editor-in-chief of the Journal of Thoracic Oncology and his major clinical interest is in the screening and early detection of lung cancer. I'm also very pleased today to welcome Dr. Keir. Uh, he's our guest speaker. Dr. Keir is an interventional pulmonologist at the Division of Thoracic Surgery and Interventional Pulmonology at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and is also a member of faculty at uh, the Harvard Medical School. Quick introduction to Biodesics. Um, Biodesics is a commercial stage company focused really in diseases of the lung. The Genistrat and Verostrat tests seen here on the right of your screen uh, provide information that helps guide treatment decisions uh, in patients diagnosed with lung cancer. We also recently added a SARS-CoV-2 test to our menu to help with the current crisis, uh, and that is now commercially available. Today's focus, however, is on the Notify tests. These tests are used to further define the risk of malignancy in lung, lung nodules uh, and those tests are currently being used in the context of COVID to help optimize management of patients with lung nodules at a time when access to diagnostic procedures such as bronchoscopy is significantly limited. A quick walk through the agenda today. We'll start with um, outlining some of the impact that COVID-19 has had on medical practice. And Dr. Springmeyer is going to walk through some policy changes. Uh, and changes to, um, or rather guidance issued by some of the professional societies. Uh, we'll then give a brief overview of the Notify XL2 and Notify CDT tests um, before Dr. Keir takes over and gives uh, a real world example of uh, how Notify is being used in clinical practice uh, today in the context of, of uh, COVID. So with that, I will hand over to Dr. Springmeyer. Thank you, Karen. So, a, a lot has changed uh, with this pandemic. Um, I'll just highlight some uh, documents that have come out. Uh, a month ago, uh, Medicare announced that they would start paying for uh, telemedicine or telehealth services. And uh, this document uh, covers, uh, goes over the covered services. Uh, in April, earlier, uh, the AMA came out with a guide to telemedicine and the details of that. And April 9th, the ATS came out about coding and billing. Um, so these are new things that you can do. And uh, in your follow-up email, uh, there's link to these, links to these documents uh, if you desire. But next slide, uh, there's other changes. And this is along the lines of what you can't do or shouldn't do or maybe shouldn't do as often. So starting on the left side, uh, the AABIP came out uh, with uh, guidance on bronchoscopy procedures. Uh, basically only high risk uh, is recommended. Uh, the surgeons came out with basically the same thing for surgeries to uh, delay them unless they're uh, emergent or affect uh, survival. Uh, then Society of Advanced Bronchoscopy also came out with a consensus statement and guidelines uh, early April. Uh, next, we go to the radiologists and the Fleischner Society uh, on uh, limitations and precautions for T CT scanning, uh, which again, uh, risk to staff uh, uh, leads to uh, more judgment on uh, when to do those and uh, then just in press, uh, published in three journals, including CHEST, 
is expert opinion on the management of lung nodules and lung cancer screening, uh, basically providing uh, support for uh, delaying these uh, when uh, you judge that's best. Uh, that again is in press uh, just uh, earlier this week, actually. So the way we see it going, uh, next slide, uh, here's the biomarker that we're talking about today. Notify lung is really two biomarkers. We have two lungs. Next slide. The way we see uh, providing care remotely, you have a newly diagnosed, newly discovered lung nodule that needs diagnosis. Uh, you've, they're generally understandably very anxious. They've been told it might be cancer. You can, with telemedicine, get an excellent history, uh, start forming the, the risk for cancer. Yeah, most of you will be able to get your images uh, by your uh, monitor at home, look at the images, assess the nodule that way, and try to look at prior films. Then you form your pretest probability. And if it's uh, less than 65% are predicted, then notify lung uh, is indicated. Uh, it can be done with home phlebotomy or if your clinic uh, has adequate uh, safety measures in place, they can come in for a, their phlebotomy. Within five to seven days, uh, you'll have both test results. Uh, very, You'll hear a rapid turnaround on the CDT. Uh, and then you're set up for telemedicine advice and counseling. And so this is personalized for each patient. Uh, at that point, you can uh, have more accurate information and decide about uh, scheduling a referral or CT surveillance. Let's talk more about the bio biomarker. This is XL2. It's a blood-based test. Uh, it's a rule-out test. Uh, the data you'll see today is based on the panoptic study published in CHEST in 2018. It's a robust test, 97% sensitivity. You need a high sensitivity for a rule-out test, which converts into a 98% NPV. Uh, so when you get that likely benign 98%, you can have high confidence uh, in, your, in your judgment on management. The test combines five clinical factors, which we commonly use, and two proteins from the plasma that are associated with lung cancer uh, and or inflammation. Now, a question that commonly came uh, is how important are those proteins? So we went back and did a factor analysis, and they provide, of the total information, they provide 30%. That's equal to nodule size. So very powerful. Um, I like to say that, can you imagine managing a, a new nodule without assessing its size? Well, we're offering uh, more information in that regard. Now, but also a common statement was, uh, I, I know which nodules are malignant or which are benign. I'm very good. I don't even use the calculators. Next slide. You're right. Canoptic in the next slide shows that Panoptic was the first trial to collect your physician pretest probability. It was excellent overall between the eight and 30, back one slide, between the eight and 30 millimeter nodules. The AUC there is 85% higher than PET, higher than Mayo, Brock, and the VA calculators. But that's great, but you're not as good on the nodules that are most important or most troublesome. Now the next slide. The low to intermediate risk, so 50% pretest probability and below is shown here. The blue line is the physicians in panoptic. AUC is only 69% overall. What's more important is the top right part of the uh, rock curve. The gray zone is when you enter the 95% NPV zone when you can get confidence in the test. XL2 is overall is shown in red. It reaches that zone much sooner. 
has a higher AUC than physician judgment. So you're not, not as good and need help in the indicated nodules for notify. Next slide. This is how an example of how the test is reported. We'll just say this patient's nodule had a uh, pretest probability of 30%, which is highlighted in yellow, so that's the low to moderate risk. Then you uh, do notify the most common result you'll get is the 98% NPV, likely benign. That pretest probability is used to calculate the post test probability. And in this case, it goes into the green highlight, very low risk, less than 5%. So you have confidence now to recommend uh, confidence that this is a benign nodule and can be safely followed with uh, active surveillance with CT. How often does this happen? The next slide, using panoptic data, uh, this is the sort of distribution you get on with your own judgment of pretest probability. About a fourth are judged to be greater than 65%. Again, this is in panoptic. 72% are in that intermediate range, 50 to 65%, where it requires a workup. Well, let's say the guidelines recommend a workup at PET CT, biopsy, or surgery. Only 2% using the, the Mayo calculator fall in the less than 5%, the very low. So uh, CT surveillance uh, with confidence doesn't happen very often. Well, let's put, see what happens when we put the notify test in. You get the result, it shifts it. Now you have a fourth of the tests in the very low risk that is predicted to reduce invasive procedures by 40%. Now, the test is even more impactful than I show here because these are the results considering uh, testing all the patients. Well, you really do test uh, the lower risk group, so the shift is bigger. And there's another factor that increases the yield of the test. The next slide, you also can get a result of reduced risk. Let me first explain the slide, pre-test risk is on the horizontal or x-axis. The y-axis is the post-test risk. The gray line is pre-test values as calculated by the Mayo. And then the bottom green line is if you got a likely benign at 98%. The middle green is reduced risk using the example of 94%. So when the pre-test risk is lower, and you get a reduced risk, uh, you, it can still, the test can still drive it down into the less than 5% range where you have confidence. You'll get a result of, low, of reduced risk between 90 and 97%. We just show you the example of 94 to give, give you that idea. All right, questions will be at the end, so I'll pass the baton to Dr. Jett. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, so Notify uh, has two components. That's Notify XL2, uh, just heard about, and then the other component is Notify CDT, which is a blood test to identify increased risk of malignancy. Uh, next slide. It has been validated against the Mayo Swenson Solitary Pulmonary Nodule Calculator. That calculator can be accessed uh, via the Biodesics website shown at the bottom of the slide here, or you can simply type in SPN calculator into your Google search engine and it will come up. And there will be a uh, fields there to enter the, uh, if you look on the left side of the slide, you enter the nodule size, the age, the edge characteristics of the nodule, smoking status, nodule location, upper lobe versus not upper lobe, and uh, prior cancer history. So you're all familiar with this. Uh, in the top here in the middle is an example of a 14 millimeter nodule, 52 year old individual, uh, speculated edges, current smoker, upper lobe location, and no prior history of cancer. So you feed that data into the calculator and it uh, provides you with a risk of malignancy of 
So that 40% is in that intermediate, low to moderate risk category uh, as defined by the ACCP criteria uh, as to what to do. Now, the other example below this is a higher risk individual, 20 millimeters, 78 years old, speculated edges. You put that in the calculator, you got a risk of 80%. If you already have a risk of uh, above 65%, then these tests are really not uh, useful for you. They're more useful for the people in the intermediate, low to moderate risk category, five to 65%. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, notify CDT is a test to help uh, identify likely malignant nodules. It, is, uh, it measures seven autoantibodies against cancer antigens that I'll show you in the next slide. And it's able to detect all cell types of cancer and uh, all stages of cancer. However, it does not detect all cancers. But if you have a nodule and it comes back uh, a high a positive CDT, uh, you have a 98% specificity and it give, that's a 78% positive predictive value for being malignant. So very highly likely that it is malignant. Next slide, please. The seven autoantibodies are shown on the left side of the slide. And if any one of these is elevated, when we do, they, they measure the titration, if it's any one is elevated, then that's considered a positive test. If it's a higher elevation, then the test results uh, the test results will come back either moderate positive or high positive. But when this test was being developed, we wanted a uh, test with a high specificity. So that means we wanted uh, the fewer uh, fewer numbers of false positive uh, tests. So in multiple studies shown here on along the y axis uh, there of non small cell lung cancer, small cell lung cancer, early stage, late stage. Uh, we set the specificity in all of these tests at 93%, and that yielded a sensitivity of approximately 40%, 41% uh, overall with a high specificity. Next slide, please. So, the unique feature of autoantibodies uh, is that they can show up very early in the development of the cancer. So on average, the CDT uh, test uh, uh, in this study was shown to, uh, to be positive about four years before the clinical diagnosis of lung cancer. Well, how do we know that? Well, so this is a unique study uh, done in the UK. It was a screening study for ovarian cancer. 200,000 women were in this study in ovarian cancer and they drew the patient's blood, uh, the participant's blood on a yearly basis. At the end of that study, 142 of those women developed lung cancer, but no ovarian cancer. So there were these blood samples that were stored on these, uh, on these uh, women with lung cancer. 49 uh, of those uh, lung cancer uh, patients had a positive notify CDT. So if you look uh, at the x-axis here at time zero, that's when they had their clinical diagnosis of lung cancer. Um, and what you can see is that the blood tests turned positive one, two, three years uh, prior to the diagnosis. On average, it was four years, but some of the some of the patients even had a positive CDT seven to eight, nine years prior to the diagnosis. So on average, this autoantibody shows up uh, can show up a number of years before the clinical diagnosis of lung cancer. Next slide, please. So this, uh, this slide is similar to the one uh, that Meyer showed you. On the x-axis is the risk of malignancy, and the gray boxes are the risk of malignancy as calculated by the solitary pulmonary nodule Mayo-Swenson calculator. If the blood test is high positive, uh, it can move the risk of those nodules up into the gray box areas, uh, and which is a high risk category. Uh, that those were for high positive uh, CDT. For the moderate positive CDT, the risk is increased in all of these nodules, and some of those nodules then are moved up also into the gray into the gray zone um, uh, for high risk for malignancy. 
So that's 65 percent and above. Those are the high risk scenarios as outlined in that recent ACCP uh, uh, paper, uh, uh, specifically case 10 and case 11 scenarios that they were talking about there uh, with risk of malignancies higher than 65 percent. Uh, next slide. So here's an example of a solitary pulmonary nodule. Uh, this on the left side, it's a 30 millimeter nodule, spiculated, fifth years old. Uh, the nodule's not in the upper lobe, uh, and the patient's a current or former smoker with no prior history of cancer. So the risk of malignancy there by the calculator is 20%. So you do the CDT, uh, the notify lung test, and the notify CDT comes back high positive. That moves that risk of that patient up into the 78% category, high risk category that uh, uh, deserves further uh, evaluation uh, and not just to follow up uh, uh, with serial CTs. It doesn't guarantee that it's cancer, but it puts that patient into a high risk category. Uh, I think that's my last slide. So I'll pass the baton. Thank you. So lung nodules are common, commonly encountered in clinical practice. And when we face patients with lung nodules, can you go to the next slide, please? We tend to classify such lung nodules according to the risk of malignancy into three categories using their clinical risk factors and our physician pretest probability and or the clinical calculators. And we tend to classify them into three categories, either a very low risk, less than 5%, low to moderate risk, 5 to 65% or high risk. Unfortunately, most of the patients encountered in clinical practice fall within the 5 to 65%, which is the gray zone. We think that Notify test can help better reclassify the risk and reduce uncertainty in such lung nodules. So who's el eligible for Notify test? Any patient who, has, who is 40 and above years of age, has a lung nodule between eight to 30 millimeter, have a less than or equal 65% risk of pregnancy as calculated by the Mayo Clinical, Clinic Calculator, and has no previous diagnosis of cancer. If, an, if we, uh, a Notify test can be done with a single blood throw, and in, it has two tests in it, the CDT test and the XL2 test. For the CDT test, any patient who has a risk less than or equal to 65%, then uh, as Dr. Jett was saying, there's a so, seven autoantibodies that can be detected in the lung cancer. It can come as either as a high to moderate, a high to moderate level of autoantibodies or no autoantibodies detected. If there is a high to moderate autoantibodies, then you can uh, 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 risk uh, reclassify patients to a higher risk, and you can make a better informed decision with your patient to the next step, probably a biopsy or a surgery. However, if the CDT test came back as no autoantibodies detected and the Mayo Clinic calculator risk uh, has a less than or equal 50%, then a reflex test, an XL2 test can be done. XL2 test can also classify patients to likely benign or low risk. And then with that in mind, you can make a better informed decision with your patient about the next step regarding CAT scans. Next, next slide, please. Unfortunately, because of the COVID era now, many hospitals tended to defer their non-essential patient visits and switch to the televisits. At BI, for example, we have used multiple platforms for virtual visits, including Starleaf, SnapMD, or Google Meet. In the era of COVID and in patients who has lung nodule, we think that a televisit, virtual televisit is very important for a few reasons. One, you want to show the patient their CAT scan images and show them the lung nodule so they know exactly what you are talking about. And the second reason is um, uh, you can calculate with them their preclinical risk of malignancy they, so they do understand what you are talking about. 
And the third reason is if an informed decision is made and uh, about a notify test, then can you go to the next slide, please? Then you can show them in, on a one slide what is the notify test. So on the left side is like what is the test for? How does the test work for for the patient? And is the notify test is the right for the patient? And the very common question we encounter for patients: Are we gonna pay out of our pocket any money? So on the right side you can see that most patients with Medicare and Medicare have no out of the pocket expenses and patients with private insurance, the BioD6 team can work with, such, with, with these patients to ensure that no out-of-pocket can be paid. And this is what uh, the BioD6 team afterwards can uh, answer any questions regarding that. Can you go to the next slide, please? And once a decision is made to uh, order a, a notify test, it's done uh, through a portal and it's like you can fill it out in five minutes where you can fill out the clinical risk factors of the patients. Also, you can upload their insurance or face sheet into the portal. And then once you send the request for BioD6, then a phlebotomist will coordinate with the patient in order for them to come and draw blood. It's very important, I tell patients, especially during the COVID area, era, that uh, the uh, uh, phlebotomist will uh, ensure that they wear protective equipment before any blood draw. And in, in the next, and after that, you can re re receive the results in the portal as well as via a secure uh, email, your email. Next slide, please. So this is an example of a patient I have encountered recently through a televisit. She's an 82-year-old woman with a 10 millimeter nodule. She, she, it is in the uh, right lower lobe. It has a speculated edge. She's a non-smoker and she had no history of malignancy. When I saw her, we, we calculated her pre-test probability of cancer and it was around 21%. Patient was very anxious because she, during the COVID era, and she wanted to see, to see how can we uh, help her with that. So what, what we decided with the patient that to order the notify test and see how can we reclassify her risk of malignancy. Go to the next step. So when we ordered the uh, test, the phlebotomist went to the home, did the blood draw, and then the notify CDT test came back as negative or no significant level of autoantibody detected. Remember that notify CDT, CDT is a rule in test. So it has no significant antibodies. So a reflex test, which is the XL2 was done. And if you can see in the bottom, it went down from 21% to 12% risk of malignancy. So when I saw the patient on, on her next visit, we discussed with her about, uh, about that her risk of malignancy went down and then she felt more, had more, more peace in mind. And then we decided to do another CT surveillance, surveillance in a few months and decide afterwards what is the best next step. Last slide, please. So it's important we as physicians to balance the risk of delayed diagnosis of lung cancer along with the uh, with increased risk of exposure to COVID when we ask patients to come to come to the hospital. We think that notify test might provide additional information to inform urgency of the diagnostic intervention. 